Good morning and welcome again everyone to our continued coverage of a very special DevOps edition for our Integration Developer News Executive Webinar Series. This again is Vance McCarthy, your moderator. And in this session we're exploring just how to capture business benefits through software-defined disruption with a return visit from Ken Owens, Chief Technology Officer for the Cloud Infrastructure Services Group at Cisco. Earlier, Ken walked us through some IT perspectives on the growing trends and popularity in DevOps, which is a movement to speed apps and improve collaboration between developers and IT operations. And today, Ken, who works with many of the world's Fortune 1000 firms and famous startups, puts his hat on to give us the insight for how DevOps movement is affecting business and how business stakeholders can actually help drive success from DevOps. So, Ken, with that kickoff, what I'd like to do is have you give us a general kind of a stage setting idea. This whole concept of DevOps is getting a lot of traction. I'm sure even business folks see it in IT and business press. But it sounds a little technical and perhaps too much for business managers to get a, a grasp on what they should do to get started. Can you give us a sense of what the outcome from DevOps is for business impact, especially when DevOps is done correctly? Yes, absolutely. So when DevOps is done correctly, it enables a business to do is really improve how quickly they can deploy new software or changes to their, their software based on it could be a faster time to market. It could be a vulnerability that they need to fix as quickly as they can. But also, um, in, in most of the the actual use cases that we've been involved in, there's much lower rate of failures in the new releases. So the software quality is improving as they're improving the development pipeline and development timeframes. And between issues or failures that happen, the re time to recover from those failures is much less as the software pipeline continues to improve with DevOps. The other thing that strikes me is kind of worth noting here is many of the business folks know of this long-time equation of the 80-20 rule where 80% of my resource goes to maintaining and just working with my ongoing software process and 20% and and maybe even less goes to innovation. There is a connection that I think we're all seeing that uh, if we do DevOps right, I can actually improve that equation and maybe put a little more money toward innovation. Is that what you're finding too? That's exactly what we're finding as well. And the 80-20 rule is something I, I, I talk about often in conferences and in customer settings because it, it is so true that if you think about spending that time really helping to improve the quality of your software and the ability to adjust or pivot, if you will, or fail fast, another term that's used a lot. Failing fast doesn't mean you're you're not making progress. It just means that you're eliminating the waste that you don't need to worry about and you're focusing and, and contributing to the things that really help you grow your business. And that's definitely the case. You're able to innovate, be able to improve the revenue stream, and probably most importantly, you're able to give your customers what they're looking for and what they want to buy. That's a great way to describe the benefits so we can let the business stakeholder enter this DevOps conversation or at least learn more about it. Businesses also want to figure out how they can most effectively come up with an implementation plan. We've heard many times where business folks may give the IT people or the architect, the CIO, charge or some marching orders, hey, let's do some DevOps. And yet we find out it's not something you can just buy in one place. It's not a product or SKU. It's just very difficult. Are there any guiding principles without having to make a business person get very technical that they can use to successfully design a DevOps program to get started? I think you hit on a very important point there, right? I think you want to start with very simple, measurable aspects of a development program. And so... I break it into just three areas. So if I think about the development piece itself, and so some of the software engineering and increasing your productivity within how you want to develop software is the first place to focus. The second piece of DevOps I think about is around the deployment. And that's where you really get into some of the quality assurance aspects. So as you're developing your, your code and you're deploying it, the faster you can bring those two components together, 
and you do your software design practices and your quality assurance practices together, then you're improving your quality of code and you're improving the availability of that code in general. And then the last piece I call running. And running is getting that software up and running and keeping it running, keeping the version control on that software and making changes to that software in a continuous process. So if you just focus on those three things, develop, build, and run the, the software, and you just kind of tighten those cycles between those three and integrate them together so that you're developing and deploying and running simultaneously and continuously, that's when you start really building that pipeline. You'll get better and better at doing it as you continue to improve in those three areas. And let's drill down on how real that is. I saw a slide from a survey that I guess actually Cisco had helped participate in. It, it mentioned many statistics about this well-oiled machine for software. And one of the findings was the firms with high-performing IT are winning. And what struck me about that, it's not just that they're getting apps done faster or there are less hiccups in an app, but because DevOps by definition helps collaborate developers and on operations or better communication, the apps are actually more impactful or more informed or just smarter. Can you give a little insight about that part of DevOps? Yeah, absolutely. And that to me is the main driver behind DevOps, or it should be the main driver. And if I could make it as simple as possible, the ability to really address a specific market segment or a specific business objective in a very concise and very quick manner with the ability to get a product out into the market, have the market come back and say whether they like this or they don't like this, taking that input from your market into consideration and making changes to your software, getting it back out in their hands as quick as you can with updates so they can give you instant feedback again on whether they like it or don't like it. What you end up doing is developing packages of software that your customer base is looking to buy from you and wants to buy from you. And so when you do that, when you're that connected to your customer, you can start anticipating their needs and you start anticipating what should be done to improve the quality of that software. And, then, and you know, based on knowing your customer, you know that this is going to make them happier as well. And so that's how you get to this ability to be twice as profitable to get 50% higher market capitalization over the period of time that you're developing the software because you're just so connected to your end customer that you know what you're developing is going to impact them immediately. It's such an important point, this idea of tying metrics of DevOps, not to simply something that the IT person or the CIO would report to the executive board, but that these are metrics and benefits that accrue to profitability of the company, increase in its market capitalization. I mean, real other tangible business benefits. And what to me is really interesting here, and I wanted to have you kind of underscore it for us, Cisco is taking this kind of both sides of the brain view of DevOps. It's bringing together technologies and partners, not just for beneficial IT efficiencies, but to really help business people track, uh, you know, monetary and value benefits. Can you give us an overview a bit of the steps that Cisco is taking both in its own technology portfolio and with partners to bring this real kind of holistic benefit from DevOps? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. The the main you know idea behind a lot of the innovation that you're going to see in the U.S. seeing come out of Cisco is being driven by our software development teams. And I can touch on a couple of the projects. Um, one, you know, that we talked about in the first webinar, Project Shipped, is all about improving the life cycle development timeframes and helping to implement a DevOps tool chain and integrated experience as fast as possible. The second one is Spark, which is a, a WebEx collaboration tool, again, based on some of the exact same DevOps principles as Project Shift and the same exact tooling that we're using, they also use as they develop their application. And they were to really increase the ability to deploy that software quickly and update that software quickly based on the needs and the demands. And so in doing this, what you find happening every single time is by having this being that connected to the pulse of your market and to your customers, 
you start bringing on DevOps experts that want to understand how you're doing this, how you've made these progresses. They want to start working with you and improving what you're doing. And then in addition to that, a lot of education is needed. And so trying to help educate not only your internal software team, which we, we do a lot of, but also our partners, as you mentioned, having an ecosystem around a service or a set of services is so important to Cisco strategy. And what I wanted to have you help communicate to the business folks, to uh, you're doing an awful lot of work at Cisco to create an environment where a developer or an IT ops or even uh, even business folks can basically parachute in and get a very uh, easy way to digest a lot of these initiatives, both with your internal technology R&D and working with your cloud partners and development code partners, even with best practice uh, experts for, for individual industries. I mean, all these things are coming together, both online and at a physical event coming up in June. Can you give us just an overview of that and how folks can get a flavor of all these things. You're completely correct. The Cisco Live event coming up in June, first week in June, is, is Cisco's flagship event. And we have a section within Cisco Live that we call DevNet. And DevNet is is probably one of the, the strongest developer-centric experiences that you will find in the industry. And this year, we've done a, a really important goal we had was to bring in some of the leaders from the industry. And so we have some keynote presentations from the leaders in the industry, like Gene Kim talking about DevOps in the enterprise IT space, Adrian Crockcraft discussing microservices. We have Mitchell Hashimoto to talk about software-defined data center. And we have Damian Edwards to look at applying learn plus combined principles to DevOps. In addition to these, these industry leaders, we're also bringing in some of the best experts in Cisco to talk about DevOps and transforming your traditional development lifecycle into DevOps. So these are all sort of like presentations and keynote events that we have. We're also doing a hackathon on the Saturday and Sunday before Cisco Live, and the hackathon theme is around IoT and cloud. And so there's a chance to kind of come in and actually learn some of these new tools and new software components that Cisco is working on in a very hands-on manner with a hackathon. We also have lots of demos, so you can come in and sit down with the experts and have them walk you through some of the exciting work and some of the exciting products that are being developed in this DevOps methodology, along with hands-on learning you can do in learning labs and a sandbox you can connect into and actually on your own, at your own pace, start developing and using some of these tools. And just one thing to kind of uh, highlight some of the other benefits of why business folks could either attend themselves or even allow some of their team members uh, from the IT side to attend is that some of these DevOps initiatives are really specifically geared to help people that might be tasked with other specific initiatives. I know that businesses all over mobility and mobilizing their resources, they're very interested in big data. They certainly want to get a sense of where the cloud is business beneficial and not simply saving money on uh, on software hosting. And aside from just the state of the art of DevOps, Cisco's also done a great job in applying them to very task specific regions where business guys have some very tight deadlines. That's really correct. And the pressure, as you're alluding to, the pressure to deliver in some of these areas within the Cisco businesses is very, very critical. And a lot of the, the efforts, you know, in healthcare and in financial services that we are taking part in are not just critical to the success of the software programs, but it's critical to the success of that business that we're helping to achieve their business objectives. And just a little plug here for the DevNet Zone track in Cisco Live, you are also doing a huge outreach to encourage the developer IT community to participate in your DevOps opportunity. You've done a really amazing job, not just putting together an agenda, but coming up with a very low-cost price package. Can you give us a little info on that? Yeah, so the um, DevNet Zone, you can get an Explore package for just $49, and so all week, you can hang out in the DevNet zone. You can see these great presentations. You can get involved with the demos and the hands-on learning labs. And it's a very reasonable price. Can you put in perspective 
the business value, what you're hearing from other attendees about what kind of investment they're willing to make to have personnel come either online or physically to the event? I think the best business case I could make would be that software defined disruption is very important to understand from a business standpoint because in my opinion, what I'm seeing in an in industry today is that every company is becoming a software company. And if you're not becoming a software company, you're probably not going to be in business for very long because if you look at some of the, the nation's most successful companies over the last 10 years, if you look in, you know, for instance, the, the movie industry and be able to rent a movie, you can't rent a movie anymore, right? Uh, Netflix has disrupted that environment. The taxi industry with Uber came along and has disrupted that environment. A lot of the retail stores that I grew up with are out of business now because of Amazon coming along. And so it's the software disruption that is happening today is, is definitely going to disrupt you. So it would be better to be the disruptor instead of the disrupted. And so get involved. I would highly recommend coming to DevNet, start exploring DevOps and Cisco is a great strategic partner and with many of our customers, and we'd have, be happy to come alongside and provide whatever type of guidance and support we can in your efforts as well. Ken, this, is, this has been a great session, a great overview, and I hope that the business folks have gotten maybe to be a better uh, understanding and appreciation for how DevOps impacts the business value and not just simply uh, the software folks in their company. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a link up to help business folks uh, get a little more info or maybe even forward some of the uh, resources that you mentioned. And just a quick reminder, Ken, the logistics, the date, time, and location of the Cisco Live and the DevNet uh, Zone uh, track is when and where? Cisco Live is in San Diego. The hackathon will also be in San Diego. The hackathon is on Saturday and Sunday, the 6th and 7th of June. Cisco Live begins on the 8th, that Monday of June, and will last through the Friday, the 12th. The DevNet Zone will be open from the 8th through the 12th. Really great session, really great wrap-up, uh, Ken. I think you've done a great job to help business connect the dots for the business value and not simply the IT value from DevOps. There will also be an online way to engage for folks that may not be able to come to San Diego. Thanks, Vance, for having me. It was, uh, it was great to be here, and I, I really enjoyed our conversation. Excellent. Thanks again. And feel free to reach out to Ken and his team, too. We're going to leave a little box up here for you to communicate if you have got questions, either logistically about the event or just overall about DevOps. This truly is a major commitment by Ken and his team and partners, and we think it's a great opportunity. And thanks again for all your time, everyone.